Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen. And I'm Doug Carmen. Welcome to the show. When it comes to integrating science, education, and art, few can fill the bill, as well as our guest, John Muir Laws. He helps people connect with nature through his guidebooks, workshops, and sketching classes. We will get to see him do some sketching, which will help us get an idea as to what is involved when you try to capture nature in the field. Hey, welcome to the show. Thank nice you so much. It's you. really fun to be with you. <laughs> well, Good I'm an you. artist, and uh, if someone came to me and said, Darlene, would you write a book and tell us about the wildlife in California? I wouldn't know where to start. So here you have written this great book, highly, highly illustrated, Sierra Nevada, Gaita. And the illustrations is just beautiful. Um, I'll show one. You can see how lavish it is. Yeah. Yep, so, uh, I guess. But the thing is, you have 1,700 species in here. So how did you handle this monumental task? Um, it was an, an absolute delight. Um, <laughs> so this, something like this can only happen if you are um, a little bit obsessive compulsive and are absolutely in love with the project. And so for six years, I was backpacking through the Sierra Nevada mountains painting every wildflower that I would come across, um, studying the birds, studying the mushrooms, studying the lichen, finding you know, who's the leech expert in the Sierra Nevada. You know, who can I go to to find about, out about all the things that I don't know? I'd be up there until the snows would push me out of the mountains, then I'd drop down to the California Academy of Sciences and go through the catacombs of the Science Museum, taking a look at specimens of insects and lizards and, 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 and fish pickled in jars to get the little fine details on, on the rest of the illustrations. Mm. So for six years, I was able to follow this in, in, incredible project. And it, uh, you know, I, I, at one point my dad uh, joined me on one of these trips and we were sitting out in this mountain meadow surrounded by buttercups as far as you could see. And he um, looked around and he said, he said, well, son, it looks like you finally got the office with the window. <laughs> and uh, so it, it was an absolute delight to work on this. What was your biggest challenge in putting this book together? Yeah, I'm, you, uh, well, yeah, well, that, that, that is, is, a, is a very interesting question because what I actually had to do is unlearn a bunch of the training which I had as a professional biologist. I'm trained as a wildlife biologist. And so when you're making a bird book, it's really easy to think like a ornithologist. And for, if you're an ornithologist, you say, what is the most reasonable, natural way to organize the birds in this book? Well, it's, of course, phylogenetic order, which is the order of bird evolution. So you'd have the most primitive birds right. at the front and work your way. This, this is the way, like, all the bird lists are in this order. And you look through most bird books. Like, there's loons at the fronts and there's warblers at the back. They're in phylogenetic order. But yeah. most of us don't walk up to a bird and go, like, you know, you look really primitive. I think I'm going to flip to the front of the book, right? You know, you see this little blue bird and yeah. you go, but you know, that could be anywhere in yeah. the book. So what I was trying to do is to make this book, I wanted to make a, the bird section useful for, um, uh, for botanists, the flower section really useful for people who were fishing, the insect section useful for those folks who are, you know, checking out a flower and a bug comes to it, so that you didn't have to have any special expertise to do it. And so what I had to do is unlearn the sort of scientific approach to do it and discover how people really would investigate something. So okay. what I did is I made, I got a, a grant from, from Kinko's, Kinko's mm. Coffees, and they printed draft versions of sections of it, and I could put those in people's hands and send them out into the field, and then people would come back and say, oh, it's wonderful, I found, I found this critter, and they'd point to whatever animal it was, and, and I think to myself, like, oh, that shouldn't be there. And so if somebody misidentified something, it wasn't because they did something wrong, they had used like, their most natural, intuitive way to find something using what I'd set up. If they misidentified something, I did something wrong. So I had to then deconstruct you know, how did you get there and rebuild the book around 
the directions that people were naturally taking to to find things. So like for instance, when you walk up to a wildflower, what's usually the first thing that you notice? The color. Okay, and what else would you notice? Um, how tall it was or how you know abundant it was. Mm -hmm. So color, um, size, mm -hmm. um, another thing that people often will open petals. notice is, is, is it, yeah, the number of petals. petals. Yeah. So some of these basic things. What neither of you said was what, what family is it in. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> and so <laughs> most, most flower books are, are organized by plant family. That's right. So um, let's say you're walking along and so pick a, pick a color. Blue. Okay, you find a blue flower with how many petals? Five. Five <laughs> petals. <laughs> five petal blue flower. Um, so there's a little pictures uh, on the front cover here. Uh, there's one of those is a flower. I bend the binding. There are little color tabs yeah. at that height. I'm going to go to the blue ones, and I'm going to thumb till I hit the number five in the corner. There we are. Yeah. There are the five petaled blue wow. flowers. Oh. So um, you don't need to be a botanist yeah. to get there. Yeah. And um, Now that's handy. So th yeah, so what I, what I did is I, I tested this with biologists. I tested this with with kids. I tested this with everybody. That you know, if as long as you kind of um, oh, in the front front cover here, this is the 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 kind of the crib sheet to how all those color tabs are organized. So th some things like the the wildflowers are really intuitive. Like the blue yeah. purple ones are together. The red ones are here. You know, birds are basically the same way, except I separated at the, out the start the hawks and owls and the the water birds. But some things like the mammals, if I organize the mammals by color, it wouldn't really do much good. It'd be like a big brown section. Yeah. And so uh, instead, I put the large mammals together, the medium-sized mammals together, the small mammals together. And then within flipping a few pages, once you get that, um, you'll be looking at a picture of the critter. Um, and uh, you, know, you, you mentioned size mm -hmm. as, as a really important thing. That's also mm -hmm. really important for looking at the insects. So in the insects, there's uh, a big picture of a bug, and then there's a small version of it next to it that shows you the actual size of the thing. So the actual size of the bug is not written in text somewhere. It's a little visual there. Um, I am. I am uh, exquisitely dyslexic. And for me, reading text in a book is, is difficult. And I, I find that that's one reason I think I loved field guides when I was a kid, because there'd be all these pictures. And so sure. I would just sit there. I would look through all the pictures. And yeah. just I, I fell in love with field guides at an early age. Yeah. And so uh, I wanted this to be visually navigable. Um, so that you could find your way, find what sort of critters that you were encountering just by, uh, by, by following those pictures. Yeah. Now, do you get the people that come up to you and say, oh, I was on the hike the other day and I found this purple lizard mm -hmm. with green and orange polka dots and it wasn't in your book. Do you ever get that? Mm-hmm. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and there's, there's it's, it's, it, you could not have a book this size. Yeah and have all the beetles in the Sierra. <laughs> beetles. So, yeah. So it's, right. it, it's continually evolving, or you're, you're, you're in, a, in a way. Well, w what I did is I got the, my, my criteria for getting in the book was you either had to be um, so abundant that you're tripping across this thing all the time, uh -huh. or so spectacular that even though you're rare, when you come across this really weird bug, you say, oh my gosh, what is this thing? I got to <laughs> know about this. That's really, really <laughs> freaky. And then, so that would get people kind of initially kind of hooked. Yeah. And then kind of help people take the next steps, have the, the, the sort of the generally found stuff there. And, and with, um, so by the time I was done, I would be hiking for days and days in the Sierra Nevada, looking at every plant I could find. And I was not finding wildflowers that I hadn't already done. So on some things, it's, I, I, I was able to be, you know, like with things like mammals, I could be pretty comprehensive. Mm. Mm -hmm. Things like insects, not Tough. so much. <laughs> All right, but, um, but I worked with um, the, the, the scientists at the Academy of Sciences and Forest Service um, entomologists and some entomologists at UC Berkeley and was able to kind of pare it down to um, what would be, given that you can't do them all, what would be the best yeah. things? And, and since this has come out, there have been new species encountered well, and that's discovered. Well, the whole thing. Yeah. There, also, I realized that there are some, there are some horrible emissions um, 
in particular, I was up in uh, Yosemite Valley recently, and yeah. um, there were these <laughs> biting flies that were like really, really slow, and they would land on you and like take their own sweet time, and they'd eventually bite you. And I um, realized that this thing was not in my book. And that it was one of the things that's going to come to you, and people would want to know what that is. Did it I fly feel... and then also crawl? When it wanted to crawl, it would walk or whatever you say, and then fly as well, because I was doing that on our trip, and I, I'd never seen those things before. Very tiny, but it would land on you, and sometimes it would fly, and sometimes it would just kind of walk around. Well, these were, these were good size, size oh, flies. Oh, so, forget those. Yeah, but no, these, <laughs> these uh, so there are things that, that aren't in the book, um, but, it, but it really was made with that sort of the, the curious naturalist in mind, the kid that I was, when I was a kid turning over every rock, I wanted to put something in that person's hand that would really give them access to the, the wealth of the biodiversity that's up there. And with 1,700 species in there, yeah. wow. it goes pretty well. Wow. So the aim of this book, though, is not just for identification. What is the, the main purpose of the book? So I, I, I don't think that going out and labeling things is the most valuable way to spend, even though I write field guides, I don't think that's the most valuable way to spend our time in nature. Names are really useful when we're communicating with other people or for finding more of the backstory, what's already been re researched in something. Um, but I think the, the most important thing that we can do mm -hmm. is to take time to slow down and to really observe the details of what's happening in front of us. Yeah. Um, Not just to identify because it's just too easy to say, oh, that's what that is. And then for some reason you get turned off and you don't mm -hmm. really take it any further. We're running a little bit of short of time, but I wanted to ask you, now you're the founder of the Bay Area Nature, uh, what is it, Journal Club. That's, that's a mouthful. Yep. Tell us what you do, and then sh we'll see a couple little things here on your journal. Oh, but sure. We're about time um, to move on, but I really wanted to show this. Well, sure, so, so sort of following up on this idea of what we want to do is get out into nature and learn how to pay attention. Mm -hmm. It actually is a skill that you can develop. The more that you do it, um, uh, that, that is focusing your attention, the better you get at it. And I think that keeping a journal, yeah. keeping a journal of some sort, um, using drawing and writing together is the single most powerful thing you can do to supercharge your observational skills. Um, this, I do this with kids, do this with adults. Um, and what we do is we g bring the journal out into the field with us we make careful diagrams and descriptions of what we see. We use the journal as a place to get us to notice what we, um, not just to, 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 to label, ah, oh, yes, that's a bunting, yeah. but to get yourself to look at it again and again and again until you so start to notice the things that have, they've always been there, but you have just never paid attention to them. And this, even the common this, things in your own I'm backyard sorry, start to really to come along. I'm sorry, I hate to cut you off, I want to find out um, now, d can anybody join this club? Oh, yeah. Are the so details the, are on there? So, so the, 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 nature, the Nature Journal Club mm -hmm. is um, a program that I've started in the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Every month I teach five free nature journaling workshops that give people the techniques how to um, be able to go out in the field and use drawing to describe what you see. Uh. Um, and then at the end of each month we have a free nature journaling field trip where we get a whole bunch of people together we all descend on one beautiful natural area somewhere in the bay area with a potluck lunch and we draw we sketch we write poetry and we use the journals to help us focus and pay attention to what we see and what's what's neat about this is that some people say like oh that would be really fun but i can't draw this is actually uh, it, drawing is not a gift it is a skill that you can learn and the more that you do it, the better and better you get at it. And actually, you get better at it really fast. Well, we want to see some of your tools. Maybe we can see that as we go, because we really yeah. need to get moving now. Great. We want to see you sketch. So we have a lot of goodies on the table. And let's see what we have. I'm anxious to find out what we you're going to We have a pick. collection of items we brought in that <laughs> right. you might like to try sketching. Right, let's let's uh, take a look at, at this journaling process. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your tools as you go. All right. <laughs> so my. Um, all my tools for nature journaling I keep in this bag. 
so that it just hangs in a hook by my door and I'm always ready to go. Yeah. Um, so whether, so I can come to this studio here and I know that I've got everything that I need right here. So um, now these, th this is your assortment. <laughs> so um, these are these are bonsai trees that you yes. have prepared and trimmed. I've so grown, yes, for many, many, many years. <laughs> the um, and this is kind of interesting for me because I know nothing about bonsai, um, but um, sort of aesthetically, these are 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 just gorgeous, gorgeous things. This is this one over here is kind of a attracting my eye the most, not just because it's near the stool. So that's going to be it. Huh? Um, okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's let's use this one right here, and I'll use this as sort of a demonstration of how um, I might go about. Um, using my journal to help me okay. notice the details and pay attention to, 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 to what I am seeing. So you like the trunk. That was one thing you liked. And so, that. yeah, initially this, um, okay. one of the things that's really uh, interesting about this is that both this one and that one over there, they both have these huge burls at the base. Yeah. And that's, that's interesting to see in a little potted plant. I guess maybe that's something that you, you try to cultivate in bonsai, but I like it. It's just fun. Um, Actually, yeah. in a, a European olive, it's quite common as they get older, and this is a pretty old tree. So, um, wow! The um, yeah. how, how old is is it's over forty years old? Well over forty years old. Uh, wow. It was pretty mature when mm, I acquired it. It was in a grove, are. and now it's separated by itself. <laughs> I might point out that it's not in the pot the correct way, but hey. It's not for show, it's to grow, and there's reasons why sometimes you make decisions to do things. So eventually it'll be turned around. <laughs> and I like the little olive growing right there. We have one an olive, olive left, so hang in there. It has so, a baby. <laughs> the most important thing about nature journaling, in, in my opinion, um, is to not focus on making pretty pictures. Uh -huh. um, okay. If your goal is, I've got to sit here and somehow create art, then you get so focused on what goes down on your paper and you're not paying attention sure. to whatever it is that is in front of you. Okay. So I journal for two reasons. Uh -huh. One is to help me kind of slow down and notice details about something that I would otherwise not have seen. Mm -hmm. The other is that this process also really helps me remember um, what I am, am, am seeing and experiencing. You're doing a portrait. Of a tree. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, what you'll see is that I'm, I'm, the approach which I'm going to take here in this demonstration is more of making a diagram mm -hmm. or sort oh. of a thought map of okay. what really stands out to me. Okay. So rather than initially starting, you know, you know, here's the top, here's the trunk, here's the base, and doing a portrait of this, what I'm going to do is to tr I, I, I am going to start wherever and sort of pay most attention to where my curiosity really, really sinks in. So initially, I am drawn to this. I'm going to take a close look at the fruit here. I'm starting my drawing with this little non-photo blue pencil, okay. which helps me kind of block in the general shape of something. Um, it helps me get my proportions. Um, so this, little purple, dusty looking fruit, um, then a yellow-green arching. I often, as I'm doing right now, I, I'm not just sort of doing this for the, 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 the viewers, but if you, as you're looking at something, talk out loud and dis you say the details that you're seeing, then you will... It helps reinforce what you're trying. Exactly. It helps you really... Other, if, oh. Otherwise, you're kind of, you're looking at something, you look down here, what was I? What was, yeah. I, was I seeing? So there's a little. So that's what you were attracted here. to. And yeah. so this originally got, and then there's a few little bumps up on these. And it is, I'm going to add a little note here. Um, P R P L purple um, spot Ooh. up there. And uh, this side here is more orangey purple. That might be because of the orange lights which we have here. Um, and dusty powder on fruit. Now I intentionally use writing and drawing together. Mm -hmm. um, 
if I just draw pictures, then this start can start to feel very, very quickly like a precious art project. And if I, on the other hand, um, also include written notes, then it starts to feel much more like a way of documenting information. Um, so people find that when they start to draw on uh, or write on their, their drawing, it actually can be a very, very liberating, very, very freeing thing. This is a so, little... Uh, oh, so these are your, yeah. So you carry your watercolor with you with a kind of a paste. The water's water is in the pen, isn't that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this is um, it's in the pen. a little oh, water brush I like that it. makes the logistics of doing watercolor in the field wow. a lot easier. Yes. Um, and uh, then uh, here's uh, high fashion. This is just a sock, <laughs> part of a sock that I've uh, yeah. wrapped around my, my, my wrist. Excellent. So there's just sort of less Better stuff. Better than to, your clothes. You see your clothes. Well, actually, I used to do it on my pants. Oh. Um, and <laughs> then sort of figured out. Went the, through a lot of pants. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it, it, uh, your clothes last longer if you. Yeah, must have drove your wife crazy. <laughs> um, well, actually, fortunately, she met me once I was a little bit housebroken and was using the socks. Um, there we go. I test my colors often on the side before they touch down on the paper. While this is drawing, I'm going to jump on to a different part of the, the drawing and start taking a look at it. So here I just sort of initially jumped in. Ooh, this little uh, okay. fruit interests me. Um, now I'm noticing the, 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 the way these leaves are coming off of these branches. Very they're shiny. Shiny yeah. leaves. They're coming out opposite each other. Yes, so two are like that, do. then two like this. Yes. Um, and so I'm going to make a little diagram over here on the side um, that to try to convey that information. And um, you'll see that if I, um, so here's a quick little diagram. Um, sort of as sort of imagined sort of seen from the top that one set coming out the next coming out sort of 90 degrees from it and sort of the uh, some ideal platonic oh I hate to tell form. you we only have five minutes five left. minutes left. yes All right. so the so then let me just sort of focus on a couple of other ideas here of what you can do if you start journaling one is to pay attention to details that you otherwise would not focus on as long. Um, another is that you want to start to get yourself to ask questions about what you are observing. So not to just sort of accept what you're seeing uh, blindly. But get yourself to start to say, you know, why is that that way? You know, for instance, I'm noticing that these leaves have a very pale side, yes. very dark on top. Um, and get yourself to say, you know, what is the, what's the reason behind that? Um, what other plants um, am I seeing that have a, that, 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 that same sort of thing going on? I look over here at this one. It has the same thing, perhaps not as extreme yeah. as this. So why is it sort of more extreme in some, not in others? Um, and it makes me then sort of think about, you know, like say eucalyptus leaves or things that are kind of coming out more sideways. You don't see that sort of two-sided thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that sort of thinking, kind of connecting it to the eucalyptus is, uh, 
you know, a, a question that I've never really puzzled myself before with. Oh, three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> well, the uh, idea here is to make notes to yourself, detailed notes to yourself. You could always fill in or take picture if you wanted, right? Mm -hmm. And you probably do that as well. Well, the, and of uh, course, you wouldn't be rushed like we're doing. You have plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. The um, so to so so step one, start to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Step two, start to ask questions. Uh -huh. um, so I'm going to write why um, deep. You become very knowledgeable about the plant that way. Top. The. Uh, and I've, I've, I've got some, you know, uh, you know stuff that I've, I've read, other sort of experiences and things. But, but if I can get myself to really intentionally question what I'm seeing, I'm going to make so much more out of every little encounter with whatever it is, be it a little bonsai plant. Um, I don't have to draw the entire thing. I can focus when I want to on those little regions that um, are, are, are of interest to me. So this is... I'm going to write a little note, the only fruit <laughs> on a, how old? Oh, over 40, but there was more. It's just that's what's left. On who a knows 40 what some. plus year old yeah. bonsai. Um, bonsai. Olive tree. Olive. Um, and so, so here is a collection of notes that... Uh, I've, I've, I've made about this little experience. Well, you know what? We're so happy that you're going to come back for another show. And this one's going to be on birds. You're going to draw some birds. We'll probably get a little bit further along. This is a hairy subject, I know. But um, we're so happy to have you coming back on the next show. And thank you for watching the show. Check John's website out. He's got a listing of all of his books and all of the activities that he's doing. Uh, very interesting. So check it out for more details and you can check the YouTubes and so forth and see him more at work. So thanks for watching the show and watch again. You have, uh, you would be probably